Okay, you guys, today we're talking about fear aggression. In a recent video that I put up titled The Different Types of Dog Aggression, one of the things that I did mention was fear aggression. And as I started to talk about fear aggression in that last video, I realized that it actually deserves a video of its own. So today we're going to talk all about it. What is it? How does it impact you? How does it impact the dog? How does it impact everyone around you? And we hope that you gain some valuable insight from this video. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, you guys, so some of the key points that I want to hit on today are going to be what exactly is fear aggression. After all, that is the title of the video. Um, but other key points that we're going to mention are going to be signs of fear aggression, causes of fear aggression, the impact it can have on us, misconceptions about it, assessing the severity, approaches to managing it, the role of professional help, um, safety measures, and the importance of just being patient. So let's get into those key points and let's start off with exactly what is fear aggression. Fear aggression is a defensive behavior that dogs display when they feel threatened or scared, okay? Unlike other forms of aggression that may be rooted in dominance or territoriality, fear aggression is rooted in a need for self-protection. Dogs displaying fear aggression often perceive something as a potential threat and react by trying to ward it off. This can occur in various situations such as encount encountering unfamiliar people, objects, or even other animals. Okay, so what are signs of fear aggression? What does that actually look like? Well, fear aggression can be recognized through specific behavioral and physical signs, okay? A dog may growl, bark, snap, lunge, keep their distance at perceived threats. You may also notice that the dog's body language is showing signs of fear with the tail tucked, hair on their back standing. Um, uh, they may be, their ears might be pinned back. They might be wide eyed. They might be giving you a lot of eye contact with wide eyes. Uh, they may be crouching a little bit. Those are all real basic type of behavioral cues that you can see in a dog that is displaying fear. They may try to keep their distance from you as well when you see those kind of behavioral traits. So obviously these signs, they can, um, they can just indicate that the dog's discomfort and its attempt to create distance between itself and whatever is causing the fear. Um, yeah. And there's a, there's a, a real like sliding scale in regards to like how deep into these signs the dog may be uh, displaying these behaviors, okay? Um, it can be real severe. A dog can be like crouching and slinking away from you. Um, like they might be a little more confrontational. They might be standing up real tall with the hair on their back and the tail straight in the air as they're giving you eye contact and barking at you. There's a variety of different uh, behavioral cues that you can see in a dog when they are under stress, but ideally they're actually really afraid. And so if you can, if you can see these signs, it'll help you better understand that the dog might be afraid of you or afraid of something else or another person or something in the environment. What are some actual causes of fear aggression? Well, there can be a, it can be a combination of different factors, okay? Um, poor socialization in a puppy's critical development period can do it. It can leave them fearful of new experiences or unfamiliar things. Past trauma, such as abuse or neglect, can also contribute to a dog's tendency to react fearfully. Genetics, this is a big one for me. I'm going to do a deep dive here in a second about that, but some breeds or individual dogs are naturally just more sensitive or anxious, making them more prone to fear aggression. Um, and in my experience as a pet dog trainer who's been helping dogs, 
uh, and, and helping uh, owners solve aggression problems with their pet dogs. Um, genetics is a big one for me, okay? A lot of people, they don't really understand, and it, this is actually one of the things that is not talked about very much in, in dog training circles much at all, but fearful dogs, a lot of times, um, there's just a genetic predis predisposition to being afraid. This is not something that we intend to do, okay? Let's be clear about that. Um, it is just a byproduct of breeding dogs in general. We can have the best uh, male and female with the, 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 the best temperament and the best qualities that we're looking for in a dog. We can breed those dogs and of the eight puppies, there might be one in there or two in there that just come out uh, being fearful. It's just a byproduct of breeding. It's not something that we intend to do. It is just something that accidentally happens when we're breeding dogs. I can verify this. Docu I have, I've documented this in my journey in dog training because I go into many, many, many homes where families have brought a puppy home from a breeder. The, the puppy has had all of the right exposures, all of the right experiences. The puppy has never been mistreated. And then when the puppy starts to mature and becomes an adolescent dog, we start to see these signals that the puppy is afraid. And again, Environments are very important when it comes to genetics. Environments have the ability to either allow a dog's genetics to thrive or be suppressed. So this is really important to understand. A, a, lot, of, a lot of puppies, now mistreatment does happen out there. Let's not, um, let's not like o overshadow that and disregard it, it is important dogs are neglected and abused. But here's the thing about this, you guys. Dogs are associative and circumstantial learners. If a dog is mistreated by someone, very rarely does that actually transfer to the rest of the world, okay? Usually, it's, it's situational to the individual or that particular environment. Now, there are some exceptions to that, okay? Some dogs will start to tread cautiously, wondering if the rest of the world is this way. But when we're talking as a whole, this is very rarely the case, okay? So we, can, we understand that um, environment has a big role in this. Mistreatment has a big role in this. But a lot of times, jog, dogs just have a genetic predisposition to being fearful. And training, especially with severe fear aggression, training will not change this, okay? It will not make this go away. But as I just mentioned, environments either allow a dog's genetics to thrive or be suppressed. And so in many cases, we're just trying to suppress this aggression from a training point of view. We're also trying to manage it, but we're gonna talk about management here in a second. But for me, this is really important that, that we talk about this because it's not being talked about enough in dog training. It's not being talked enough about in dog ownership. And I think it's very, very, very important to understand. So anyways, let's move on. Okay, so, so what are the impacts of fear aggression? Well, fear aggression not only affects the dog, but it also impacts the owner and their relationship with their dog. The stress of managing a fear aggressive dog can lead to frustration and anxiety for the owner. This can potentially weaken the bond that they share. Um, more, moreover, the fear aggression can limit the dog's social interactions and experiences, which can further exacerbate the problem if it's not addressed. So uh, living with a fearful dog can be stressful. It's, I see it all the time in the homes that I go into. So, you know, our dogs living with a dog shouldn't be stress, stressful. It should be joyful. It should be pleasant. It should bring happiness to us. It should, um, we should be happy to see our dog and come home to our dog, right? And if we have a dog that's fearful and we have to come home to that fearful dog that's creating stress at home, um, 
that's not good. We already deal with enough stress in our life when it comes to working out in the world. We have these nine to five jobs that are stressful. We have to deal with people that are unpleasant out there in the real world. So coming home to a fearful dog is not good. Living with it is not, living in stress with that dog is not good. And we should certainly try to figure out ways to maybe manage and um, train this particular dog in order to bring the stress level down on our part at home. All right, so what are some misconceptions about fear aggression? Well, there's quite a few uh, misconceptions. One common myth is that fear, aggression, fear aggressive dogs are bad beyond help, um, leading to unnecessary euthanasia or abandonment. Other misconceptions is that fear aggression is a form of dominance, when in fact it's usually a response to a perceived threat or something the dog may perceive as dangerous. It's important to understand that these dogs are not trying to be dominant. They're not trying to dominate you, that's for sure. They're not trying to dominate your guest. Um, they're simply reacting out of fear and, it, and it, its need to feel safe. Now, another big misconception, and this is huge for me, it's really important that you guys understand this. Dogs that are acting out in fear aggression towards people in your home or strangers when you're out in the neighborhood or out on a walk or out in public places, when your dog's acting fear aggressively towards them, the dog is not protecting you, okay? Let me say that again. The dog is not protecting you. The dog is protecting itself. Now, we can make the dog feel like they're doing the right thing when we try to coddle them in a way that we made it in a way that we may try to coddle someone else, another human being in particular. Uh, but dogs, uh, remember, uh, uh, it, the reinforcement's really important here, um, and. Uh, coddling can be misinterpreted as reinforcement. So when you're trying to console your dog and the dog's acting out in fear aggression, be careful about that. You may be unintentionally reinforcing that aggression. So really important, I just wanna say it one more time, the dog is not protecting you, it is protecting itself. One last side note on that topic. Um, uh, I mentioned that the dog is protecting itself. You guys, it's really important to understand that uh, dogs don't protect us naturally, okay? Some dogs, they're territorial by nature. They'll bark at things. But a dog that's protecting you, that is a trained skill that you have to teach the dog, okay? It doesn't come naturally. So protection training is a skill in it of itself. It takes a lot of work and dogs don't do this naturally. We have to show them how to do this in training, okay? Okay, you guys, we, we thank you for sticking around and watching the video up to this point. If you have found the information to be valuable and helpful, definitely subscribe to the channel. We would love if you support the channel and the content. Um, all It's just a click of a button or a touch of your screen. And if you're interested in training equipment that we use and we approve of, uh, definitely check all the links down below. There's, uh, there's toys, there's training equipment, there's muzzles, there's crates, all of the things that we may need to use to train a fearful dog, you can actually find below. So give those things a look as well. Let's continue with the video. Assessing the severity of a dog's fear or aggression involves observing how frequently the dog reacts, what triggers the aggression, and the intensity of the dog's response. An example, as an example, some dogs may only show fear aggression in specific situations, while others may react in a wide range of circumstances. The severity can also be gauged by the dog's threshold, how easily it is triggered, and how quickly the dog can recover after an aggressive episode. A professional assessment is often recommended to develop an appropriate treatment plan. Because here's the deal about this, you guys. Fear aggression, there is a, a ginormous sliding scale in terms of how severe or mild the fear aggression can be. Incredibly, incredibly mild cases, dogs are probably going to be a little more flighty in regards to the fight or flight response, 
when they are confronted with something they're afraid of. So a real mild version of fear aggression is a dog who's going to tuck and run. But it can get real severe, okay? So severe, in fact, that we label these dogs fear biters. They try to run up behind you and bite you from the rear. Or they try to get you from behind, right? That's a, that's a fear biter. And it can get real severe. The dog might just try to nip and run. Or the dog might try to latch onto you and, and try to, like, <laughs> end you because the dog is that afraid. But this is not good on the dog's part. It's coming from an incredibly stressful point and perception from the dog. And so a professional assessment is very helpful in this sense because we want to we wanna be able to determine whether or not this is resolvable from a training point of view. There are some cases that are not, you guys, okay? So that's really important to understand. It's a good idea to find a dog trainer and kind of like determine whether it's resolvable or not. Do your homework on that though, okay? Okay, you guys, so what are some concepts in regards to maybe addressing or managing fear aggression? Well, from a training point of view, it typically involves some behavior modification concepts that can help change the dog's emotional response to the triggers. Desensitization is a component of that. It involves gradually exposing the dog to the fear-inducing trigger at a level that does not provoke aggression. Um, while counter-conditioning pairs the trigger with something positive like treats to ideally create a more positive association with what, what triggers the dog to be fearful. Um, When it comes to a tra when it comes to training in particular, we, there's essentially just a few a few approaches. Okay, there's going to be an obedience approach, meaning uh, if something triggers my dog to be aggressive, I can make my dog hold a sit stay or a down stay, so that the dog's not able to freely react to the potential trigger. Um, but in some but but in the real world, that's not always feasible we may need to consider some what we refer to as reward-based redirection, meaning the dog has, the, tr the trigger set the dog off, and now the dog's acting out in fear aggression, and now we have to redirect the dog with treats and, get, and ask the dog to do something else. So that would be reward-based redirection. Now in some other cases, um, those things may fall a little bit short. Motivation is a big component here. The dog's desire for the treats in those particular circumstances really do matter. And there may be some dogs and some circumstances that where that falls short, it just does not work. And we may have to consider managing the dog, okay? So this just means that we are putting the dog away in a crate or in a bedroom. In the, in the example of a dog that is wanting to act out fear aggressively towards guests in the home. So removing the dog from the environment is a management concept that we can consider when we're trying to minimize the dog's success at being fear aggressive. Um, and then the last consideration that we need to make for this, you guys, is going to be punishment. There's a big misconception out there that punishment may make the fear aggression worse and that unfortunately that is just not true okay um unfortunately dog training has its politics and um it's agenda pushing and it's extremism just like anything else in the world and there's a school of thought out there that is pushing this idea that if you try to correct or punish fear aggression it's going to make it worse that's just not true okay um now it may not, if, if it's done inappropriately, it may not like make the dog stop, right? Um, but punishment, even though this, this term uh, has a negative perception, like something as simple as a squirt bottle can be punishing to the dog. A noise that the dog doesn't like, it can be punishing to the dog. And it is something that we may have to consider in some particular circumstances. So those are some concepts in, in regards to, uh, to uh, managing or training or redirecting the dog. Um, and hopefully you find that, that helpful. Okay, so we've determined that we're unable to resolve this on our own. What is the next step? Well, without question, it's to call in a dog trainer, right? 
Um, you want to you want to try to get a dog trainer or a behaviorist who has experience with this to come in and help you. So make sure you do your homework properly. And then also, um, you, I want to clear the air on something really quickly too. A dog trainer and a behaviorist is essentially the same thing. There's really no difference between the two. Either the, the, either the dog trainer has experience working on behavioral issues like fear aggression, or they don't. A dog trainer may only have the skill set to teach obedience commands and they may not have the experience to actually work on or work with fear aggression um, and so a dog trainer out there might be calling themselves a behaviorist but really they're just a dog trainer okay the be if they're calling themselves a behaviorist they just probably have an, a lot of experience working with fear aggression or or other forms of aggression for that matter okay but in any case, this dog trainer is going to be able to assess the dog's behavior, behavior, identify triggers, develop a customized behavior modification plan. They can also uh, teach owners how to safely implement these techniques and adjust the plan uh, as the dog progresses. OK, professional guidance is invaluable in ensuring the safety and well-being of both the dog and the people around it. So if you're at a loss for on how to deal with it on your own, Definitely uh, find a dog trainer that's going to be able to help you do your homework. Just, you know, these days with all the online reviews, it's you can you can see that what people are saying about the dog trainer that they hired. So just search the reviews, find someone who's had a high degree of success working with fear aggression in particular or other forms of, of aggression for that matter. And and choose wisely. Do your homework. OK. Okay, you guys, so safety is really important when it comes to working with fear aggression, especially if the dog is threatening to bite. We want to make sure that we're keeping people safe. So muzzle is without question the best tool to consider uh, when we're working with fear aggression. You may have to muzzle train the dog. The, may, the dog may not be comfortable with the muzzle being on their, on their face. And so you, the first step may just be muzzle conditioning the dog, okay? But tools like muzzles, leashes, all of the training collars, including the metal ones and the electric ones, um, sh those, those are all things we should consider. Even harnesses or gentle leaders, like we should not restrict ourselves when it comes to training tools when we're trying to manage and train fear aggression, okay? We don't want to put those restrictions on ourselves. It can really make things harder. Um, and like things at home, like baby gates, those things can be really helpful too, okay? But of course, crates, that's going to be really important in the home environment, baby gates and crates. Um, now, owners should always be aware of their dog's triggers and take steps to minimize exposure while gradually working on desensitization. So in short, we want to use all of this safety equipment and training equipment to minimize the dog's success at acting out in fear aggression. We gotta be really careful about this, you guys. There is a conditioning concept that comes into play here. I'm not gonna to go too in depth about it, but we don't want, we don't want dogs classically conditioning um, their fear aggression, right? It's, <laughs> that's bad, it becomes involuntary after a certain amount of successful repetitions. So get on it early, find help early but safety is absolutely a top priority. Do not restrict yourselves when it comes to training tools. And if you're unsure how to use it, make sure you find the right help. All right, you guys, the final thing that I just wanna to talk to you about is gonna be the idea of just remaining, being patient and remaining consistent in working with your fear aggressive dog when you do hire a dog trainer, okay? Changing a dog's fear aggression is a gradual process that requires patience and consistency from you, okay? Your dog trainer is just there to guide you along and coach you and help you with the details. But this endeavor is yours. And remember, if the dog is has a genetic predisposition to being afraid, this is gonna be something that you're going to endure for a long time. So make sure that you're mentally prepared to take on this particular endeavor. It's also important to understand that the progress may be slow and 
setbacks can occur. You may be doing well for a while and then you lose the dog to a particular stimulus in a particular environment that you weren't necessarily prepared for. So setbacks can happen. It is not the end of the world. And if you're having setbacks that happen further and further um, apart over time, you're definitely making progress here, okay? Now, consistent training, being calm, um, it, this, all of these things can lead to significant improvements over time, okay? It is okay to celebrate small victories and remain committed to the long-term process, knowing that each step forward is helping your dog become more confident and less fearful. All right, you guys, so that's all we have for you today. We hope you find the information valuable. If you did find it valuable, definitely subscribe to the channel. We would love the support. It's just one click of a button or one touch of your screen. Um, so definitely subscribe if you get a chance to. And we'll see you in the next video.